Harmon Wilts, uh, Bayer Technical Agronomist here. I want to spend just a few minutes talking about corn uh, growth and development, really, and some of the things that I think that we can do to try to get our best stand, hence best yield as we go forward. And I always like to start with what is the end in mind? And the end in mind to me is a great high yielding uh, field here, and I can tell at tassel time when all the tassels are even and uniform. So that's really what we're trying to do here, kind of the goal. My goal as an agronomist to help our dealers and customers really is really establishing a high quality stand. If we get a high quality stand established, we know that we can maximize corn yields at that point. Some of the things we control and some we can't. If we look at the number one one that we really are unable to control is the weather, but look at all the other items that we can control, the nitrogen, the hybrid, previous crop, tillage, plant population, things like that. So I want to spend a few minutes on some of that. So what do you see in this photo? What jumps out? What I see here is some nice, even, uniform plants, but here's one that is just barely emerging, coming out of the ground. Lots of residue in there that we will want to make sure we have fixed and uh, take care of. So, and the smaller seeds over there had a lot of residue, and hence they didn't get the seed-to-soil contact uh, over here on this side that our seeds over here did, and hence they were delayed by almost seven to eight days coming out of the ground. So at first you might say, hey, the seed germ wasn't good, but in this, and sometimes that can happen too. But in this case, in many cases, um, we had too much residue down where the seed is causing some challenges. We've got many factors here. I think it all starts in the fall. Uh, a good job in the fall means even, uniform, a little blacker is better, and the residue is evenly dispersed and, and flat too, nice and level. And so in the spring, it warms up nicely. Um, the moisture is more uniform. And uh, same thing with the residue. It helps all of those things too. So seed bed preparation, I think, is the big thing. We can't fix a poor job in the fall, but we can do the best we can come spring. I just wanted to show this slide because it goes back a couple of years. But it looks like in here what it shows is the green lines were ideal planting date times. The red were a couple days that were not the best. So if we think about over the years, um, there's always one or two days that are not the best for emergent seedling growth in the planting season. And it isn't always the first day and it isn't always the last. Sometimes it's in the middle. Um, but if you really, if the soil is really ready and, and ready to go, let's plant corn. Another little uh, shot I want to show you is on the right hand side um, and on the left hand side, which plants would you rather have? And at first, I'm assuming all of you are going to say, I'll take these because they're more even and uniform growth on them. However, this was planted on April 16th, um, three years ago. This was planted on May 17th, three years ago. Which one do you think is going to yield more? I'm going to take the one on the right side. It was The planting date's a big deal. About a 15 bushel difference in yield. This one yielded more than this just based on planting date as we move forward, so, okay? Next, I wanna kinda of take a minute here and just take a look at what are we seeing here in this photo? Um, wow, at first you can say the leaves are kind of cut up a little bit, maybe there's some zinc or magnesium deficiency, but what I wanted to show here, see how even and uniform these plants really are. So the guy did a great job of having his residue movers moving just enough material out of the way so those row units, uh, the gauge wheels rode really nice and even, got very good uh, planting depth, and guess what? Very good emergence and seedling growth. Uh, I want to spend a couple minutes on plants here, and I really want to show us here looking at uh, some roots from this perspective. And uh, what I want to kind of take a look at and show you here is uh, the seed. First thing we want to do is we want to find the seed. And on the very tip of the seed, when the plant comes out, what we're actually going to see this is the tip side, this is where the germ is. We've got a nice radical coming out, lots of good hair on the radical. Then on the other side of the seed, more on the top, we're gonna to have two seminal roots coming out, and that's gonna be what we really are looking for. We want them to be nice and white and lush at this point in time. If they're brown or cut off, uh, we we'll either have some disease or maybe some fertilizer burn, sidewall compaction, some of those kinds of things. So that's what I'm looking for. And then we've got a really nice uh, shoot going up here with some gun some growth. So when we dig up these plants, this is the kind of growth we're, that we're looking for and really want to see. So what I want to look for when I dig the plants up, a nice white healthy root um, on the, the, the seminal root here, the seminals, and then the radical. And then I want to see this nice and white and opening up here too. 
If we get a curvature here and this stuff breaks under the ground, then that plant is in trouble. But this is ideally what we're looking for at that point. Approximately 120 GDUs is what it'll take to kind of get that out of the ground. Um, growing point. Neat little thing here uh, to take a look at. What I did is on this plant that was provided by the FFA, I actually went ahead and uh, slit this open. You can see the seed here. And then the growing point here, if you uh, slit the plant open, you can kind of see it right here. And then my little trick, I just bend that usually, and boom, it pops open, and you can see where the growing point is. The growing point is typically under the ground until about V4 to V5. That's when we see it emerge. So these are some things, if you had a frost uh, early, things like that, you'd want to take a look at how's that growing point. And what we're looking for in the growing point here is we want to have nice and white, white and yellow lush uh, with some good moisture. You'll see if it got froze, it'll start to turn brown and dry up. So if we look here, um, all of a sudden I found my seed. I've got the radical here. I've got the seminal roots as well. You can see that. But notice there's quite a bit of depth here. So how do we identify planting depth? So in this case, what I would do is find my ruler here that's got an inch on it. And I'm gonna measure from the crown to the seed and that's about three quarters of an inch. And then if you add another three quarters of an inch, about an inch and a half planting. Here, we're looking at a plant that's planted, we're taking one and a half plus three quarters. So about two and a quarter inches. A Couple of other things here I just wanna to touch on is good news and bad news. Um, four simple requirements for a uniform uh, germination. One is adequate uniform soil moisture, as I talked about. So if every seed in the entire field has a uniform soil moisture, it's going to germinate at the same time. If the every seed has a uniform temperature, that's going to help us get better emergence too, and uniform. And then adequate uniform seed to soil contact. So that's where that, um, if the seed is surrounded by good soil, um, it's going to be able to imbibe the water faster. Bad news, if one or more of these requirements sometimes is absent, the field is going to be more uneven and up and down as we go forward. Recommendations, early planting before April 20th, increase seeding rates about 15% more than you want to have uh, emerge. Um, after the 20th, 10% is what we would always recommend to uh, run with. A couple things on the planter setting and making sure we get a good seed bed too. Um, ideally, this is what we're looking for. So when our soils are ready in really nice conditions, like I said, if I grab some soil, put it in my hand, and I can kind of peel it off and it'll break apart fairly reasonably, um, we're ready to plant. If I, if I squeeze it and it's pretty muddy yet, then, and I break it all apart, I go and do tillage in there, and I have all these small little fine particles. And guess what? Um, I've got really good seed to soil contact all the way around the seed. It's gonna imbibe the water Quickly, over here I've got air pockets and it's not going to imbibe the water as quick. So this plant here is going to emerge a few days before this plant. The other thing is the planter. We want to really make sure that we change the disc settings when we need to. Typically when they get to 14, uh, smaller than 14 and 3 quarter, we should be looking at changing them. Because here's what's going to happen. Ideally you want a nice V here. Um, if your disc openers are, are uh, too short, too small I should say, we're gonna get a W at the bottom of the trench. And what's gonna happen, this is ideal, we put it down here. This is more than the W and we're gonna have some air pockets in there. So I wanna make sure that we do a good job there. The other thing is uh, managing residue movers. Should they be turning all the time? Should they be turning a third of the time? Should they never be turning? What do you think? From my experience and what we've seen is I like to see them moving all the time. So what you wanna really have is moving them all the time maybe just uh, cutting away maybe a half an inch or so, so that that gauge wheel runs nice and even and uniform. Because if the gauge wheel is going like this, your seed depth is going like this too, and your seed placement is moving on you as well. So take a look at managing the residue movers. I wanna just show this for just a minute. Growers always call and say, hey, what should I plant first? What are the dates? So I've kind of set up a little table here going, planting before the 20th, after the 20th, and after the 26th. So these are the hybrids that we would typically recommend planting early. These are good hybrids that are gonna emerge well too, but if you got a choice to plant these first, I would plant these first. I wouldn't change a field though, based on agronomics. Um, these will, will do well also. And then here's a, couple, a few that we would wanna wait for the soil to warm up. We know they're not quite as good from that aspect. 
So with all of that, I hope you had a chance to think through things a little bit and start to get your mind thinking a little bit about the spring. How are we going to place the seed? How are we going to get even uniformity? The goal is, is to, to find a nice even stand so we end up with nice even tassels to really maximize yield. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking very excited to uh, do some training and see all of you guys um, as this crop gets planted and, and out of the ground. Again, uh, Harmon Wiltz, Bayer Technical Agronomist, thank you for your time and enjoy.